Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society, and I'm going to read you Parker Gallant's part two of The Mark Carnival is in full Bloomberg. <laughs> so Parker has been tracking the green movement for a long time, and he is a former international banker, so it's nice to have a banker's insights on a former banker like Mr. Carney. So let's see what he has to say. Part one of this series briefly reviewed Mark Carney and some of the many creations he played a hand in developing or where he takes part in, including biased organizations such as the World Economic Forum, where he's a trustee, or in his role as the UN Special Envoy on Climate Action and Finance. The institutions and his creations are focused on altering the climate by using financial modeling. The modeling seeks to either get the world to embrace socialism, globalism, or perhaps communism, and is cited as the Great Reset. The World Economic Forum's focus on the Great Reset tells us that by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, and puts the Carney push in perspective. The World Economic Forum just doesn't tell us who will own everything. The goal of the Great Reset and Carney's role in it seems focused on using his credentials as former governor of the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England to convince the global financial community, central banks, to adapt the concept which will make the super rich richer and the middle class poorer. Just a few days ago, the Washington Post carried an article entitled, Why Big Central Banks Are Becoming Climate Warriors which carried the following comments related to Carney. In 2015, former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney raised an alarm about the tragedy of climate change and warned specifically about repricing events. That includes physical damage that destroys the value of assets such as waterfront properties, imposes new liabilities on companies, as shown by, say, California utility giant PG&E Corp's wildfire-driven bankruptcy, or sharply raises insurance prices. Another risk is a sudden slump in the value of certain assets because of drastic government action to combat climate change, like the introduction of a steep carbon tax or regulations that keep fossil fuels in the ground. The speed at which such repricing occurs is uncertain and could be decisive for financial stability, Carney said. The Post did not fact-check Carney's claims, as the article was a product of Bloomberg LP, which is part of Carney's friend, associate Michael Bloomberg's empire. <laughs> is it any wonder why a September 2020 Gallup poll showed 27% have not very much trust and 33% none at all in U.S. mass media? So the focus of the super-rich is on climate change and a reduction of those nasty CO2 emissions, which keep the world functioning by generating food for us and plant and animal life. Here in Canada, rumors have circulated that Carney would run for the Liberal Party in the next election. But that rumor has been dispelled as he recently tweeted he would not run in the next election. His tweet explaining why said, Climate change is the most important issue on the planet. I made commitments to Antonio Guterres and Boris Johnson to help make sure COP26 is successful this November. As a goalie, I know you don't skate off the ice in the third period of a must-win game. <laughs> you might if the other team offered to double or triple your pay, which I suspect would be the opposite for Carney if he agreed to run for Parliament with no guarantee that he'd win. He would have to forego what he currently receives for the over 15 plus titles and positions he holds to avoid a conflict of interest. The reductions of emissions he claims are needed will reputedly be created by central banks regulating financial institutes to ensure that they price in climate change risk when regulating financial companies. Those institutions will be regulated to both invest and or lend money to borrowers with sustainability goals. This will be accomplished by instituting carbon taxes on all of mankind's consumption, driving up the price of everything. Companies will be required to offset their emissions by purchasing carbon offsets, which is where the big money will be made 
at the expense of the consumer. A recent article in the Financial Times headlined, Carney calls for a $100 billion a year global carbon offset market, quotes him as saying, the demand for this is going to be huge because we have this big shift, more and more companies, and it will be a tsunami by Glasgow will have net zero emissions plans, said Mr. Carney. Bloomberg Green ran a recent article about a top U.S. seller of carbon offsets, Nature Conservancy, which noted they were reputedly selling meaningless carbon credits to clients such as J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, BlackRock Inc. and Walt Disney Company, which used them to claim large reductions in their own publicly reported emissions. The article went on to state, in 2020, companies purchased more than 93 million carbon credits, equivalent to the pollution from 20 million cars in a year. An article from GreenBiz on June the 14th, 2021 claimed carbon offset prices on average stand at three to five dollars per metric ton of CO2 at present, with experts fearing that prices are far below the level required. Meaning, to reach Carney's suggested hundred billion dollars a year, they would have to increase by more than 300 times their current level. The foregoing raises a question. Why has the Trudeau-led Liberal Party imposed a cost of $170 a ton Canadian by 2030 on Canadians when the market is currently trading at only $3 to $5 a ton? The current levy on Canadians is $40 a ton, or about 10 times the market value. Needless to say, one of Carney's creations, the Task Force on Scaling Voluntary Carbon Markets, or TSVCM, recently morphed into Project Carbon, a voluntary carbon marketplace pilot consisting so far of CIBC, Itao Unibanco, National Australia Bank, and NatWest Group. They seek others to join them. Their stated aim after claiming Corporations worldwide are using carbon offsets as a tool to implement their climate action strategies is to support a thriving global marketplace for quality climate carbon offsets with clear and consistent pricing and standards and will provide a valuable pathway for our clients in their efforts to achieve a net zero goal. Presumably those quality carbon offsets are unlike those being sold by Nature Conservancy, as noted above. So just a presumption on my part, Parker's part, but I suspect the real aim is to profit from the Carney creation, and should all governments raise their carbon tax to Canadian levels, their aim will be achievable. No wonder another one of his tweets stated, I fully support Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party and will do everything I can to help. <laughs> It seems obvious that Carney's claim that climate change is the most important issue on the planet is his narrative to fool the masses and Bloomberg LP aids in the process via the media. His focus is clearly on consolidating wealth among the super rich and that he joins that club. The rest of us will own nothing and will be happy. <laughs> right? So that ends Parker Gallant's two-part um, blog post about the Mark Carnival goes full Bloomberg. Um, I think Parker's work is great. He's got many excellent blog posts that follow the super green blob, especially that in Canada, of ENGOs who are eroding the economic wealth and prosperity of all Canadians and pushing climate catastrophe scenarios that are not based on science, far from it. So I recommend that you look up some of Roger PLK Jr.'s recent work where he has shown that um, in say the, the Mark Carney presentation that he gave in 2015 to uh, Lloyd's of London, he was referring to Risky Business, which is a report that was done by uh, some ENGOs and funded by Tom Steyer and Michael Bloomberg in the States, according to PLK's research. And it proliferated this implausible scenario known as RCP 8.5. So it's the highest, the scariest, the most unlikely 
computer modeled scenario that uh, predicts the future climate of the planet. And that's where the climate catastrophe comes from. But as Roger Pialke's recent work shows, this is based on outdated science and the RCP 8.5 model should not be used by anyone anymore. Unfortunately, it's used by almost everyone, especially those who claim there's a catastrophe and we have to turn our lives upside, upside down. So hope you'll look up his work. Look at our website. Please subscribe. Please join us if you can. Donate or just share our stuff. And let's get a conversation going on climate change and the uh, Great Reset plans to make us own nothing and make us pretend that we'll be happy. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. And thanks very much to Parker Gallant for giving me permission to read his work.